the RS3 tends to flutter when lift off throttle. Is this due to wastegate not big enough? On other VW Audi platforms, people tend to stay away from the flutter. Is it okay on the Dazza? Okay, we should probably talk about sounds that cars make and what wastegates are and yeah. what sounds wastegates make. Yeah, so wastegates don't really make a sound. Um, there's there's a, a big misconception that the you know the Audi IMSA GTO and the Trans Am you know, back well, there used to be one here. Yeah, um, that that they would go well that that's not the wastegate. So that's turbo surge, and that's the compressor surging against a, cro a closed throttle body. So those those cars specifically made that sound because Audi believed, and their philosophy was that um, they wanted to keep the pressure between the turbo and the throttle. They didn't want to bleed it off using a bypass, and so that's why those ca those ca cars would make that sound. It's very hard on the turbo, yeah. and so they they had a they had design and engineer turbos that would basically last one race before they needed to be rebuilt um, and the thrust bearings and and friction surfaces inside the turbo would be tortured by what happens so what happens is um the you, you open the throttle uh air comes in through the turbo combustion happens it goes through the turbine and everything spins up and so the compressor starts making boost and on the compressor wheel between the compressor wheel and the intake valve, there's whatever boost. And I think those cars probably ran around 30 pounds of boost or, you know, on track. Uh, so what happens uh, is you have flowing pressure. We've talked about this before. There's not just pressure in your intake. There's pressure moving through your intake very rapidly. And that's why so much CFM is required from a turbocharger to make that much power. But the second you shut the throttle, <coughs> that you now have flowing pressure that turns into static pressure and the compressor wheel is spinning and it's no longer being powered on the turbine side. So you have this 30 PSI that hits the throttle and it comes back through the compressor wheel and the turbo actually spins backwards. And, but it's not a on or off thing. And so that the turbo will go choo, choo, choo. and as air bleeds back through the compressor wheel, it makes that fluttering sound. Um, and, and so that's what you're hearing on your RS3. When you shut the throttle, the bypass valve isn't opening fast as fast as it, it could or should. And so you're, you're hearing that fluttering, uh, which is compressor surge, which is this pressure wave going back through the compressor wheel, out the turbo inlet, and then getting sucked back in and out as, as the fluttering happens. Um, it, it's, it's hard on the turbo. It's, it's not great. That's why you have a bypass valve. I don't know, Nate. Can you comment on like why the the, the, the factory programs it that way? Or I, honestly, what it depends. What, I don't know what intake is on the car, but you know, frankly, what you're probably hearing is that bypass valve, and you're hearing that rush of air coming back through the bypass valve, which is then in the intake pipe, which is this far from your filter. So I've heard this on on factory cars though that you you can do for, flutter, for like a half a second. Yeah, yeah, and there is some delay before that yeah. the valve opens. So you're there's. Yeah, you are going to hear some of that. Um, and depending on the tune, you can get surge on a lot of these um, turbos, uh, which is basically, um, it's, it's the exact same effect even if you're wide open throttle. If you're building too much boost that, for the turbo to, to uh, sustain, you'll get a back surge of air you know, coming back across the turbo essentially. And, and you know, well, that's, yeah. You'll get a fluttering sound as, as boost is ramping up that low RPM. Right, and the reason for that is there's not enough exhaust pressure to truly drive the compressor wheel to produce that boost. And so... The the, the so it's, it starts producing boost, but there's not enough yeah. energy behind the turbine wheel. And then once you get to a certain RPM, there's enough flow to support right. that. But it's it's the turbo just kind of getting going. Yeah. And, so all turbos have a surge line, which yeah. is that, which is right. you know basically that that you look at the limitation. Yeah, yeah, if you look at the compressor map, there is a line on the left side. Yep. The second you drop below that, the the compressor wheel cannot support the flow um, based on the turbine wheel energy at that yep. at that flow on RPM. Yep. So. But yeah, um, it's probably a combination of the sounds you're hearing on that when you lift. Um, you're going to hear, you know, the discharge from the bypass valve. Um, the turbo yeah. may be stalling a little bit depending on how quickly it interacts. It's not necessarily, you know, it's, yeah. it's a little bit of, 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 you know, of that extra load Javod was talking about on the turbo, but usually it's pretty a pretty quick um, situation. It's, it's not a problem. I, I wouldn't worry about it on these cars. The And you'll the, hear that factory. Like you put an intake on these cars and yeah. a factory tune, you'll hear that. So they're doing it, you know. It's not necessarily a bad thing awesome. because because 
you know, Audi was right in those race cars is there's something to be said for keeping some of that pressure and not bleeding off immediately. Right. Um, and if it's clear that you're not going to use it, then bleed it off. But if you're if you're shifting, there's no reason to open that valve. And, and a, a you've got to yeah, sort of recharge the entire intake. It's correct. worth it. Um, but you notice this with these big like tile 50 mil blow off valves. You go rot. It's all and all the air comes out. And then the turbo is just like and has to like fill the whole intake back up. So um, generally in race cars that we've built and designed, um, I've put smaller bypass yeah, or and not can, bled off as much. Right. You can you, you know. can tune them as well, usually where they you so you have a kind of a residual amount of pressure left in the intake. Um, yeah, and that's that's what you can do with the tiles is you can put stiffer springs in so it only bleeds off so much of it and it does keep some and, and you can do that with the factory calibration as well because those are all targeted. Um, that's electronically controlled uh, bypass valve. And that's another good argument for having short, efficient intake tracks without lots of big voluminous tubing. Um, that that's fine on the dyno. It can be okay drag racing, but it does take time to fill all of that up yep. to achieve the certain. Yep. certain we've, we've talked about that a lot too, is, is turbo sizing. You know, it can look great on a dyno or a drag strip. And then when you actually try and drive it on the street or on a you know road course, yeah. um, you can be a lot slower at times mm -hmm. because you've got a lot of inertia and a lot more. Um, yeah, but it might look great on the dyno sheet and everyone's yeah. like, look, it spool, you know, it spools up faster than stock. Yeah, like, that's not like a 2000 RPM. They're yeah. sitting on it and, you know, it's taking, you're yeah, not seeing the time it takes to spool. In fourth it's, gear. It's, yeah, it's just really loaded up. Yeah.